Good evening. Welcome to Sweet Dream Sundays. Thank you for joining me this edition. My name is Bobby Markle. I'm the principal of Caldwell Arts Academy. And tonight we will be reading The Three Javelinas, written by Susan Lowell and illustrated by Jim Harris. Let's begin. Once upon a time, way out in the desert, there were three little javelinas. Javelinas are wild, hairy, southwestern cousins of pigs. Their heads were hairy, their backs were hairy, and their bony legs, all the way down to their hard little hooves, were very hairy. But their snouts were soft and pink. One day, the little javelinas trotted away to seek their fortunes. In this hot, dry land, the sky was almost always blue. Steep purple mountains looked down on the desert where the cactus forest grew. Soon the little javelinas came to a spot where their path divided and each went a different way. The first javelina wandered lazily along. He didn't see a dust storm whirling across the desert until it caught him. The whirlwind blew away and left the first little javelina sitting in a heap of tumbleweeds, brushing him off himself off. He said, I'll build a house with them. And in no time at all, he did. Then along came a coyote. He ran through the desert so quickly and so quietly that he almost was invisible. In fact, this was the only one of coyote's many magical tricks. He laughed when he saw a tumbleweed house and smelled the javelina inside. Mmm, a tender, juicy piggy, he thought. Coyote was tired of eating mice and rabbits. He called out sweetly, little pig, little pig, let me come in. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, shouted the first javelina, who had a lot of hair on his chinny chin chin. Then in a huff and a puff, I'll blow your house down, said the coyote. And he huffed and he puffed, and he blew the tumbleweed house away. But in all the hullabaloo, the first little javelina escaped and went looking for his brother and sister, Coyote, who was very sneaky, tiptoed along behind. The second javelina walked for miles among great cactus plants called saigros. They were ripe with red fruit high in the sky, but they made almost no shade and the little javelina grew hot. Then he came upon Native American woman who was gathering sticks from inside a dried up cactus. She planned to use the long sticks called sarugo ribs to knock down the sweet cactus fruit. The second javelina, please may I have some of those sticks to build a house? Ahu she said, which means yes in the language of the desert people. <laughs> when he was finished building his house, he lay down in the shade. Then his brother arrived, panting from the heat, and the second little javelina moved over and made a place for him. Pretty soon, Coyote found the Sarugo rib house. He used his magic to make his voice sound like the another javelino. Little pig, little pig, let me come in, he called. But the little javelinas were very suspicious. The second one cried, no, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Bah, said the coyote, I'm going to eat your hair. Then the coyote smiled, showing all his sharp teeth. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. So he huffed and he puffed, and all the sarugo ribs came tumbling down. But the two little javelinas escaped into the desert. Still not discouraged, Coyote followed. Sometimes his magic did fail, but then he usually came up with another trick. The third little javelina trotted through the beautiful Paolo Verte trees with green trunks and yellow flowers. She saw a snake sliding by, smooth as oil. 
a hawk floated around and above her. Then she came to a place where a man was making adobe, bricks from mud and straw. The bricks lay on the ground, baking in the hot sun. The third little javelina thought for a moment and said, May I please have a few of your adobes to build my house? See, si, answered the man, which means yes in Spanish, the brickmaker's language. The third javelina built herself a solid little adobe house, cool in the summer and warm in the winter. When her brothers found her, she welcomed them in and locked the door behind them. Coyote followed their trail. Little pig, little pig, let me come in, he called. The three javelinas looked out the window. This time the coyote pretended to be very old and weak, with no teeth and a sore paw, but they were not fooled. No, not by the hair of my chinny-chin-chin, chin, called back the third javelina. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, said the coyote. He grinned, thinking of the wild pig dinner to come. Just try it, shouted the third javelina. So Coyote huffed and puffed, but the adobe brick was too tough to budge. Again, Coyote cried, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. The three little javelinas covered their ears, but nothing happened. The javelinas peeked out the window. The tip of the coyote's raggedy tail whisked right past their noses. He was climbing upon the tin roof. Next coyote used his magic to make himself very skinny. The stovepipe, gasped the little javelina. Quickly, she lighted a fire behind her wood stove. What a feast it will be, coyote said to himself. He squeezed through the stovepipe. I'll think I'll eat them when I red hot chili sauce. Whoosh, sizzle. Then the three javelinas heard an amazing noise. It was not a bark. It was a cackle. It was not a howl. It was a scream. It was all those sounds together. Yip, 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 yip! Away in a puff ran smoke shaped like a coyote. The three little javelinas lived happily ever after in an adobe house. And if you ever hear a coyote's voice way out in the desert at night, well, you'll know what he's remembering. Thank you for joining me on this Sweet Dreams Sundays. I hope you have a good evening, and I hope you join us next week.